Hey everyone, I'm Sam Popkin and uh, welcome to my studio. Um, I've gotten a lot of requests from uh, people that want to see my studio, uh, want to see some of my guitars and amps and pedals and maybe demo them as well. So I'm going to do a three-part series, uh, part one guitars, part two amps, and part three pedals, uh, taking a look at all of my gear. Um, but first I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of my studio, a quick tour. Um, so right now where I'm sitting is where you'll see me do my Beatles covers. So I'm going to flip it around and show you what it's like from my point of view. So here is my desk and I have my iMac and my Yamaha HS7 monitors for mixing. Uh, under the desk I have a small pedal board I recently built. Uh, I, I actually did this, I have a, a larger pedal board I'll show you later, but I, the reason I did this was during my Beatles covers if I wanted to play a volume control, a volume pedal, or click on a boost, um, I can be at my desk and do it, not have to be somewhere else in the room. Um, so it's mostly just 1960s kind of pedals, essentials for recording. I have a Analog Man Tone Bender, Bad Bob Boost, King of Tone, Angry Charlie, Distortion, Compressor, uh, Dr. Robert, Strymon Deco Tape uh, Simulation, and Vine Pedal. And to the right of my desk uh, is a closet and MIDI keyboard. And this is my National Harmonium. It's a reed organ from the 60s that my uncle got me. Um, it's a little out of tune and the foot pedal doesn't work, but um, on the right you have your keyboard. And on the left you have buttons that you press down for just whole chords. So I might use that for We Can Work It Out or benefit of Mr. Kite at some point. And you'll see these uh, acoustic panels throughout the studio. And these were made by GIK Acoustics uh, that custom make these sound panels. And it really helped deaden the sound of the room. It was really echoey before. And the white and uh, gray ones are absorbers. So they absorb high frequencies. And these are diffusers which scatter the sound, um, the waveforms, which makes it a little more even sounding, not too dead, um, and the bass traps that trap the low end. Um, so coming back here, I keep my mics and cables and picks and slides there. Uh, I have my auto harp tucked away. And all my guitars are out on my Hercules racks because uh, I have a humidifier, I can climate control them. And I have a percussion box of goodies, ukulele, tambourines, shakers, and drumsticks. Um, Epiphone Sheridan I'm being lent. And Pearl, uh, this is a Pearl Export Series drum kit. I have a Zildjian 18-inch crash, 16-inch crash with rivets, and a 20 inch ride um, and this Ludwig Jazz Fest blue oyster pearl very similar to Ringo's except it's blue not black oyster and my humidifier and then coming around to my large pedal board my dad built this for me it's uh, like 42 inches long I think but I have a ton of pedals so it was kind of nice to be able to <laughs> have an insane board like this. Um, I'm going to do a video later on all my pedals, but for now I just wanted to show you this uh, Layla dual switcher, which is really important because I can have stereo inputs and outputs and be able to flick between um, different amps or do stereo wet dry. So I can play multiple amps at once, which is nice. And here are my amps. I have my Tweed Pro, my Maestro Echoplex EP3 tape delay. Um, this is my Silverface Pro Reverb, 1962 Fender Champ, 
and my 65 baseman. And this is a 1959 lap steel, Fender lap steel, uh, also called the Champ. Uh, these are pedal shelves, uh, inspired by that pedal show to make these. And coming back around to my desk, I have a Tascam Porta Studio. It's a cassette mixer and recorder. So if I want a lo-fi sound um, or tape saturation, I can get that. Um, it also has a pitch control, which I can speed up or pitch down a song, uh, which might come in handy for certain 60s Vera speed. Here's my record player that I rip vinyl off of. And my Focusrite interface, which has eight inputs. And it's a Pro 40, a Sapphire Pro 40, and it comes in handy for uh, drum miking because I can have eight microphones at once if I ever need that. So that's the tour. So now I'm going to take you through all my electric guitars, uh, starting with my first electric guitar that I purchased. Um, it's a 2005 Gibson Les Paul Standard, and I got it um, around 2005 or 2006, brand new in Richboro, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's with along with my Tele, it's my favorite guitar. Um, it's all original except the pickups are OX4 low wind Alnico 4 PAFs, which just have a more vintage sound to them. They originally had Burst Bucker Pros in them, which I also really liked. And um, yeah, I also added these knob pointers to the knobs to make it more vintage accurate and an amber switch tip. But uh, yeah, it's a great guitar. It has a lot of sustain. It's very heavy, which I don't mind, but a lot of people do. And it just has a beautiful flame finish to it. So let's hear it. So next is my Fender Telecaster. This was the second electric guitar I owned, and I bought it new in 2007. This is a model called the Fender Hot Rod 52 Vintage Tele, um, and it originally had a Seymour Duncan mini humbucker in the neck position, but I changed it to a No Caster 51 um, custom shop pickup in there. Uh, in the neck, and then I had to change the pick guard to fit that pickup. Um, it originally had a hotter bridge pickup in here, which kind of matched the humbucker, so I had to change out um, the bridge pickup to match the No Caster 51, so now it's a pair. Um, these are great guitars, though. This is my favorite guitar, uh, electric guitar. I bought it because I love Bruce Springsteen and it has a really comfortable neck. It's a nine and a half inch radius and it has a satin finish on the back. And it's just such a great sounding guitar. <laughs>
this is the third electric guitar that I bought. It's a Stratocaster. It's a Fender American Vintage Reissue uh, 59 Strat in sonic blue. You'll notice it's actually more of a pale green look, and there's a story behind that. So I'm going to show you a picture of what the guitar looked like when I opened the case and when I first bought it. Uh, I immediately noticed that it was green and not blue, and I was a little bit disappointed. But um, it's kind of cool um, how that happened. So the nitrocellulose lacquer on these vintage style fenders, when, when they're exposed to UV light, like near a window, um, it yellows, the finish yellows. So Olympic white Stratocasters will turn yellow over time if they're exposed to that light. In this case, the finish turned to green because it was blue. And it's really cool how, how that works. On the back, you'll actually notice it's still sonic blue. So I guess in the shop where it was sitting under a window for a few years, just the front was exposed. And so when I got the guitar, it was green. Um, I was a little disappointed and I'm actually in the process of selling this guitar now because I've always wanted that sonic blue Strat. It's like a Beatles dream guitar for me. But I made this guitar work in other ways. I uh, modded it. I changed the pick guard to white because the green guard and the green just didn't really work for me. And I also replaced the neck. This is a American Vintage Reissue neck from 2007. It's a maple um, seven and a quarter inch radius vintage neck with a soft V profile. And on the back I've also modded, I've gotten rid of the tremolo arm and I put in this wood block and that actually creates more sustain. It's a mod that Clapton did on his guitars. If you're not using a tremolo arm, it's kind of like making the Strat a hardtail. This is the fourth electric guitar that I bought. I got this at the Philly Guitar Show in 2018, and it's a 1967 Gretsch Tennessean, the same model that George Harrison used on Beatles for Sale, Help, and Rubber Soul. Uh, his was a cherry red finish, but mine is a walnut finish, and mine has the nameplate on the headstock that says Chet Atkins model, but other than those two things, it's exactly like George's guitar. It's got a 10 inch radius, a Bigsby, uh, fake F holes, and Hylotron pickups. Hylotrons are single coils as opposed to humbuckers, uh, filtertrons, which are humbuckers. And it's in great condition. Um, it's not been modded at all, other than pinning this bridge down on the vintage Gretches, they wiggle around and it's been refretted but the binding is really great on this guitar, uh, which is also unusual for vintage Gretches. Um, and the Bigsby stays in tune, and it sounds really great. It's super low output. It's like less than 3K ohms.
This is my 1970 Gibson SG Special. This is the guitar that Pete Townsend used at Live at Leeds and on the Tommy album. And it's similar to other SGs you might know, although the Special has P90 pickups instead of humbuckers, um, dot inlays, and these plastic white button, um, here they are, tuners. Um, so it's a more of a student model than the standard, but it has such a great sound. It's a real 1970s one, um, right before they started to kind of get more shady in the 70s at Gibson. And it has the volute on the back, which is a little bump in the, uh, I don't know if you can see it here. It helps in case the guitar <laughs> falls, um, so it won't crack the headstock like a lot of other Gibsons. They started doing that in the late 60s. And it has the uh, Maestro Vibrola. This guitar I bought last year, it's a Rickenbacker 36012 12-string guitar. It's from 1999, and it's the V64 series, so it's a 1964 reissue. It's the one that George Harrison played, although his was a 1963. So these 90s reissues were very um, vintage correct for the most part, except uh, the pickups in here, um, the ones that this came with were a little bit hotter output. Um, so I actually replaced the pickups in here um, with scatter wound toaster pickups. Uh, please check out my YouTube video where I compare the two. So these scatter wound pickups are a little bit more vintage, accurate sounding, a little chimier. And it's just a great jangly sounding guitar. This guitar I bought only about a month ago. It's an Epiphone Casino made in 2021. It's a USA model in Royal Tan. So Royal Tan was an option um, from the very start of the Epiphone Casinos. And uh, George Harrison's was actually a vintage sunburst like John Lennon's, but his faded a little bit into a more red color. So mine's kind of similar to his in a way. Um, this is really well made in the U.S., uh, the first time they have done that in a long time, since the 70s or 80s, 
and it has Gibson P90s. It's made in the same factory as Gibson. Um, just a great sounding, fully hollow body guitar, and it's really great. It needs a bit of a setup, but I love it. This is my Fender Precision Bass. I got this in New York City in 2018, and it's an original 70s Fender, uh, very heavy, and it's in a natural finish um, with a replaced white pick guard and replaced uh, pickups. These are 1962 custom shop pickups, and it plays so nicely. It has a poly finish but it's actually really smooth um, to play on the back of the neck. Um, and it has flat wound strings on it right now. I think they're Roto Sound flat wounds. This is the closest thing I have to a vintage Fender guitar. Um, this was made in the 1950s in Fullerton. It's a 1959 Fender lap steel champ. And these are really easy to play. You just need a slide. Um, it's tuned right now to open G. And it's very simple, uh, just volume and tone knobs. And the pickup in it is actually the same pickup used in um, Duo Sonic and Music Masters at the time and it's got a cool back to it. It's like a golf green uh, felt cover. This is my 1956 Gibson J45 acoustic guitar. It's a jumbo dreadnought size, and it's got a huge sound. It's really great for playing rhythm. It's got a uh, spruce top, 
and mahogany back and sides. I got this at Carter's Vintage Guitars in Nashville in uh, 2018. And it's a bit beat up, but uh, it just sounds and plays amazing. It's got um, an added strap button uh, to the back there and replaced tuners. It has uh, the bigger green uh, vintage Cluson tuners that would have came with a uh, white button tuners like my SG has. This is my 1969 Martin 0018 acoustic guitar. Um, I bought it on eBay 10 or 11 years ago. It's a really lightweight, beautiful, smaller body acoustic guitar, um, but it has the same spruce top mahogany back and sides as the J45. And it's really great for uh, finger picking especially. It's got a beautiful mid-range to it. Um, it's all original um, except the pick guard uh, curled over time, the original one. So this is a replaced black pick guard. Um, and I put a pickup inside, um, an LR Bags I-Beam active pickup, uh, so I can plug in for playing live. So the input jack is now where the, set, the uh, strap button was. And yeah, it's a beautiful example of an original 1960s Martin. This is my 1967 Gibson B2512 12 string acoustic guitar, and I bought this at Groon's Guitars in Nashville in 2018, the same trip that I bought my J45. And this was previously owned by Tommy Shaw of the band Styx. He was their guitarist and must have sold some of his collection to Groon's Guitars. And this was refinned in Cherry Sunburst by the time I got it and a pickup was installed, a passive uh, K&K Pure Mini pickup. And it's a great uh, refin job. It looks gorgeous. I'm not sure if it was originally in Cherry Sunburst or natural. Uh, those were the two options, uh, but probably was originally Cherry Sunburst. And it wasn't set up great when I bought it. Uh, my tech, Doug Proper, had to really um, do a lot of work to get it to where it is now. Um, the truss rod wasn't even functioning but I'm so glad I went through with all of that hassle because it's a really great guitar.
This is an Admira Irene uh, classical acoustic guitar. It's made in Spain and it was pretty cheap. I bought it on Reverb uh, during the pandemic lockdown. All right, thanks for watching uh, demos of all my guitars. If you've uh, made it this far, then congratulations. That is impressive. Um, so stick around next time for part two, which will be all four of my amps. Bye.